I was born a I was born in a, in a Christian household and Christian upbringing, so that was my introduction with um, you know interacting with any sort of like transcendence, uh, and that was that was just natural. And today I wanted to bring Travis on just to get some insights, some thoughts on symbols and symbolism, a subject so vast that in and of itself might be synonymous with occultism as a whole. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to say was just thanks for being here, Travis. I really appreciate it. You know, um, if you would, I'd, I'd love like a brief introduction. You know, what got you into this? What got you into this occult art? Well, um, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm Travis Lawrence. I'm currently based in the Midwest of the United States, of, in rural Illinois right now. Um, I my background is I'm a, I'm a printmaker. Um, I primarily focus on woodcut printmaking, which is um, a I mean. It, hundreds and hundreds of years old process um carving carving blocks uh pushing them through a printing press the traditional style and uh, i hand paint all of my prints as well so each one is a is a unique piece on its own and i've been doing this for well over a decade now wow. so yeah and um you know as for like subject matter you know it's you know it's changed over the years and it 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 does kind of reflect on where I'm at um, individually as a person, my studies, um, my interest, uh, influences and all that. So it's, it's hard to say where exactly or when exactly I got into necessarily the, the subject matter that I work with because I've been, you know, I've been studying um, this type of content for most of my adult life I, I, but I've had a, a spiritual life my entire life you know I was I was born in a, in a Christian household and Christian upbringing so that was my introduction with um, you know interacting with any sort of like transcendence uh, and that was that was just natural and as I got older and learning you know other other perspectives other approaches other viewpoints you know those those influenced me as well mm -hmm. and um so yeah, there's, it's it's hard to necessarily say like when I I didn't have like an aha moment or, or necessarily a, you know a, a situation that kind of like opened a specific door for me. It's just kind of been a, a lifelong journey. Yeah, yeah, it seems very organic. Now you you really quick you mentioned the woodblock printing. Isn't that uh, similar to what Albert Durer did? Wasn't he a woodblock printer? Yeah, yeah, he did that. He, he's got some etchings as well, where etchings you'll use like a, a metal form, and it's it's a it's a different process. But um, yeah, yeah, the majority the majority of works that you see by him, they are yeah, they're woodcuts and engravings. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, he's kind of like the, uh, the the Michael Jordan of of that in the West. So <laughs> yeah, he's popular. I even have one of uh, Albert Sturr's prints, the Four Horsemen. I like yeah. that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Now. I guess something I would like to build into is so I first of all I didn't know that you hand painted all of them. All right, I know I was about to go somewhere with that, but really quick, I did not know that you hand painted all of them. That's intense. That's really cool. Uh, the uniqueness is is amazing, and I really appreciate that. I mean, I, the viewers themselves won't be able to see this, but I do these kind of one-off. Uh, I call them like Nematonian manuscripts. They're covered in weird little symbolic pieces and things like that. Uh, yeah. with the various like Hebrew uh, mm -hmm. special languages, the messenger languages and things like that, with a lot of thought and attention to what it is that I do, where I put it and how I write it and everything like that. And uh, that just that sense of uh, never having the same one a second time means a lot to me. And I, I think a lot of people appreciate that kind of uniqueness, you know, uniqueness is inherently valuable somehow. It's, it's very mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, um, I mean, so with yeah, with printmaking, you know, you you typically you make multiples because it's you know, if you're unfamiliar with the process, I'm basically making a stamp. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, traditionally, um, well, in the early days, they didn't necessarily number them; they just pumped them out and would sell them uh, to make a buck. But then, as they kind of worked more into the fine art realm, you know, they you know they kind of wanted to have them to be um 
limited so that they had a uh, more of a value that could be controlled. Mm. So that that kind of happened, and um, you know, I'll do. It depends. It depends on the on the block, but uh, usually I'll do about addition of like twelve. Sometimes I'll do like twenty four or something like that, depending. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, ideally when you when you're working with them, they all look the same. You know, if you're a master printer, that's your that's your goal is to, you know, each each one each one of the additions looks like the other, however many you have in the addition. Um, for me. You know, I, I like the I like the energetic exchange that you do with these pieces, mm -hmm. and majority of that process on my end occurs with working with the block. So it's it's me spending several hours just pouring into the block itself, and that's not necessarily the that's well it's it's not the final piece. It's 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 still part of the process. Um, so, you know, if someone were to, to have one of these prints, you know, especially or created pieces that carry a certain sort of energy to them, um, I'll go back and then I'll, I'll to add color, I'll go in and I'll hand color each one and I'll keep them relative to where like it's, it's a similar color pattern. Um, you know, like if there's an individual with, you know, like a robe on or something like that, and it's red, then I'll do them all red. Now, um, I mm -hmm. also I stain the paper too and kind of rough it up just to kind of give it that that aesthetic so that it has that like that older look to it, just because it's kind of like a, a homage to, you know, these 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 old alchemical looking, uh, you know, manuscript pieces. Yeah, yeah, I, but, I do. I have a, a watercolor that someone did for me where they did that. Where they kind of stained the the paper with just a slightly darker tint, yeah, uh, in, in like patches, almost as if yeah. it's like oiled or dirty, and it looks yeah, remarkable. Yeah. I it, it is, yeah. it is just an aesthetic, but my gosh, is it a good one? <laughs> but so, in, but even too in the in the history of of um, you know mass mass printing, you know there, there's there's two ways you can do that if you wanted to add color. The the other way would be you know, there would be a block for each color. So back to like the individual with a, like a red robe, you know, if I wanted to do that, I would have to carve a block that was going to be the red color and then print that. Yeah. That's also how you get consistent series of, of, of prints that all look the same. Um, I actually have an interesting question. Do you consider your process of printmaking with the way that you're engaged with it and everything like that? Like personally, do you consider it like a magical practice almost? Oh, because totally. of, yeah. of the involvement yeah because yeah, that's where that my mind when it comes to artistic expression tends to go that way i very much see any sort of creative process as a magical activity mm -hmm. uh, and i noticed that you kind of alluded to the energetic exchange so to say and i was like okay maybe this is something that kind of gels with you i didn't want to assume though so i thought i'd ask yeah yeah so so by by going back and you know hand coloring each individual print you know it's it's back to that situation where i'm having an, an intimate relationship with that that piece whereas if i just printed it it's it's that's a very like production style like you know like it's like using a, a modern day printer or something mm -hmm. like that or just pumps it out whereas all my energy was going into the block and then the block's the energetic piece which the block still is an energetic piece but by by coming back with each print and then spending several more hours with with each one um you know pouring pouring these colors into it um it's it's back to having that that energetic exchange and right. you could i mean you could call it charging them if you wanted to right um, well and what's interesting is you could also wager to a certain extent that the the, the devising of what's going to be on the block so to say the actual creation of what's being expressed or shown is in a sense an expression of intention Right. So you really have all the pieces there that are normally used in like a classic example of developing a magical operation, which is kind of funny. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's not really like haha -ha funny, but it's kind of amusing how directly similar kind of this creative artistic process is to any form of magical expression, which in many ways, I believe Eliphas Levi would have said, you know, the magician is himself an artist. 
right? Mm -hmm. uh, or they often call mysticism our art, you know, mm -hmm. which has become very popular in a variety of circles, but there's validity to it. The, you know, people aren't pulling that out of nowhere. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I, it's kind of interesting. I, I guess the most I could say is I'm just glad that we agree on it because it would be really weird if you would have been like, no, I don't see it as magical. I would be like, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, might not have been a good guest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And another thing too, like, you know, thinking of that, that process, um, if you're familiar with Paul Foster Case and his, his mm -hmm. Boda deck, if, if you join... Um, Builders of the Adidum, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things that they have you do is go in and you hand color your your tarot deck. Uh, one, not only does it like familiar, familiarize you with the, the symbolism of the colors which they've dictated, um, but it's also that it's, it's you like, you know, you're, you are charging and building your, your personal deck at that point. So it's like right. you and a deck are having more of this like creative, uh, relationship before actually putting it to use um, so that when you go to put it to use then it's you know there, there is that relationship there where, where right. I buy one off the shelf you know it's you know there, there are things you can do to, to prep it and everything depending on what you believe in and everything like that but um, it's it's more of a an intimate relationship that's being created uh, and it's, it's literally being created you're part of the creative process yeah I mean, I believe in the development of magical implements. Uh, you know, so let's let's do a little funny tidbit uh, in Star Wars, right? Uh, yeah, really, I know, right? R ridiculous beginning to this example. But in Star Wars, uh, Luke's not a Jedi until he builds his own lightsaber, right? Mm. In the okay. same manner, you could wager that the construction of your own wand is, in essence the the point i mean i i have a rod i don't have a wand but i have my own rod that i've you know created and made and decorated and all that and i consider it immensely personal to me and i believe the creation of your own tools is a big deal even if it's not let, let's say online you can buy a nice sterling silver pinnacle or something let, you, let's assume we're doing hogd stuff right and you get this nice sterling silver pinnacle it's beautiful and you did charge it in a way because you gathered the funds and you bought it and everything but it lacks that personality of you sitting there and having to like work away at it, you know, or yeah. mold it or what have you. Yeah. yeah. And that's, um, that is, I like that word intimacy. That's a really good way to put it kind of connects you to the item, you know, mm -hmm. has yeah. a lot of expression. Hmm. Well, then I guess I'd like to add, well, I guess I don't have to ask this. I was going to say, well, do you consider the personal development of implements important? I, I'm going to go ahead and wager that yes, right? So, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that, you know, that's, that's the, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, that's the only way. Oh, of course. Has to be done. Um, but if you have the ability to do it, then. Yeah, of course. Yeah, there, there's there's just so much more to it, and it's just you know the, the fulfillment part of that. Right. Um, it's like yeah, I I made that. You know, right. Instead, like, I ordered that off of this cool shop or something like that. Yeah. But, well, and I think a lot of people would be wrapped up in the. Um, I think people would get too caught up in like the quality of it. They'd be like, oh, it doesn't look as good. But I, yeah. I think the the personal aspect of it is what really separates those two items from each other. You know, because granted, there are some things that I cannot make that I am absolutely going to buy. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. There's yeah. there's some robes. Oh man, there's, there's some <laughs> robes I found before. There's no way I could make them. I mean, maybe yeah. I could with time and effort, but. Uh, dropping $350 is going to be a lot smoother and uh, yeah. I'll consecrate them. Right. I'll make them personal one way or yeah. the other, but yeah. you know, definitely not making them. Yeah. But I, I, I enjoy the implements. I, I believe it's well understood, especially to people who practice that the more, what, what many people like to call the receptive aspect of the mind is very uh, favorite it, very, very favorative of flashy and uh, artistic things, you know, uh, really enjoys the kind of, uh, gosh, what do I call it? Almost romantic usage of items and implements. We love our, our symbols and symbolism, which is, you know, the, the general subject of what we're discussing here. But at the same time, uh, we, we get we get into that sort of thing. It, it reminds me of, let's say, like uh, masonry or Thelema, right? 
the 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 implements and the way the temples are set up and everything like that you know the lodge room is set up in such a way which is symbolically representative of something but it's very impressionable it's very like ooh, look at that you know like there's something going on here Mm -hmm. and uh that that receptive aspect of the mind kind Mm -hmm. of eats that up you know it really enjoys that kind of yeah significance in something that would otherwise be very mundane right yeah there's um well, even even using those examples, you know, like you know, talking about say like Freemasonry, for example. So um, the the focus on the East necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, ideally, the way at least a, a, a Freemasonic lodge is set up, that you know, you're going to have the worshipful master in in the East. But for example, in Scottish Rite, whenever you're you're doing degrees, um, it's it's a different it's a different situation since you're typically you're using a, a stage, a theater-based stage, and um, you have to have a symbolic east. Like whenever we do it, I think I think our east is pointing north because that's just the way that the you know the the building and the and the the um, theater is set up. So it's it's not necessarily literal. But it's the it's the symbolic aspect to where you're, you've got this ordered structure that you're building, and as long as you know mentally you're you're sticking in to this um, this symbolic structure, then the brain is receptive at that point. Um, yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's a really good way to describe it and put it. Which I had almost I, I don't think I've ever really mentioned that the SR degrees are theatrical, or that many of the later degrees are theatrical degrees. Uh, I do have some Masons who watch, so they'll understand, but pretty much everybody else is going to be left out. Uh, but uh, your examples don't really require like an understanding of it, thankfully, which is phenomenal. Yeah. And, and even like, you know, like a, a personal space at home, um, you know, they, depending on whatever system you're using, you know, they, most of them seem to say like, if you've got like an altar space or a holy space, you know, um, you know, put it in the east. Yeah, yeah, they but do. Sometimes you can't do that, you know, especially if you're living in a tiny apartment in a city or something like that. And you're, <laughs> you're, you know, you uh, you're stuck with what you got. Um, yeah. So it's if 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 you don't have that and you've got to use a system that requires it, then it's the it's the symbolic act is is what you're doing. And I don't necessarily think that 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 matters. Um, you know, if, if you're doing something and you're, and you're pointing the, the wrong direction, um, because it, it's more of a, um, I guess you would say it's more of a, an astral act at that point in, in the imaginative sense. Right. Um, and, you know, you know, you can argue and say, oh, well, it's maybe something along the way of the, you know, the, the magnetic flow or something 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 physical <laughs> if you wanted to go that route no, feng shui's okay. off yeah yeah, feng yeah. Shui's I'm, not off. Gonna, I'm not gonna argue that and it's like that's fine that's that's your system then but um it's, it's right for me i think it's more something that's happening on on a different on a different level than you know like what you're doing like literally you know, i think that's, that's the whole point of the whole of everything i think most practitioners would definitely agree with you on that too right uh, I think the the literalness of it, that's a very specific mindset. You know, that's a very particular magical mindset. Uh, but as as chaos magic becomes more popular and many, many people are kind of leaning into that uh, kind of particular revelation of like, oh, I can get away with doing this with a lot less or uh, things yeah. that are a little different, you know, uh, yeah. it, it is almost reminiscent of um, the AA. Right. And by that, I mean the Thelemic AA in their kind of, I don't want to say indulgence, but their more heightened usage of this kind of free form of magic. You know, they seem to have this, uh, while they do have a rigidity in philosophy in a a variety of ways, maybe the AA people I meet operate in very different manners. It's, it is very personal. It's very unique. Mm -hmm. Um, In fact, in a way you could almost say it is that magic for them is a personal expression ultimately Mm -hmm. and and only that which you know brings us back to that thing we were talking about earlier of of magical operations being almost like an art you know an artistic usage uh which i do i agree with that line of thinking uh 
Yeah, granted, I don't discredit any of the styles, though. If someone wants to be super particular about their physical usages, about which whichever herb does what and things like that, that's totally fine by me. Right. Uh, because, again, it's like you put it, you know, it, that's their system. That's great. But do I feel that you can get away with it with a variety of other things? Yeah. And by what I mean by get away with it is you can accomplish the same ends, you know, yeah. Yeah. by the same means with with the different implements and stuff. Right. Right. Uh, I think that's, I mean, that, that's literally what helped um, chaos magic be what it became and, and thrive. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think there is a, there is a, um, I don't know if I say like a slippery slope or there's a line to where if you get too loosey goosey, you, you lose, you lose that order. Um, and you can find yourself maybe in like a dangerous situation where it's you're you're it's too much chaos yeah and i think that happens a lot in that in that in that realm but also on the same on the opposite pole or opposite side of the spectrum um you know especially if you get into you know just the the rigidity of you know like freemason inspired like say like golden dawn where everything's just like you know you got your correspondences and it's like well this is this this is this this and this and this and this um there's almost like too much of a rigidity too if, if if you're not if you're not flexible um too much order so i think there's there has to be like some sort of balance because you know both the order and chaos are, are extremely beneficial and you know the benefit to the these systems that have order is that you have you have a structure that you're working with and something to reference and you're not just like floating out in you know the unknown by yourself and if you get into a situation um you're kind of you're kind of screwed because it's there's there's no you know you're off the path you know hmm. there's there's you don't have a reference point or anything because you're just just going which is great you're going to get tons of results but then you might you know, find yourself in a spot where it's going to turn around and burn you or you can't get back or you're you know at that point you're going to have to consult with some outside assistance of some sort um is that personal sure. experience <laughs> um maybe a little bit yeah yeah i've, I've had <laughs> i've had moments like that mm -hmm. um, but i was also going to say too you know and on the the opposite side back to the the structure and the order if you got too much order you know, you, you get stuck in kind of the state of like, this, you got to do this and then this and then this and then this in order for this to happen. And it doesn't happen because you, at that point, you're just, you know, it's, it's too mechanized and you do need that chaos because the, 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 the chaos is where the, the creativity part comes. That's yeah, where the energy yeah. Is. So you, you do need that. So there, there has to be some sort of middle ground. That, and if, I don't think, um, it's going to be the same for everybody and that's something you just got to figure out on your own um, it's so interesting you talk about kind of this balance of rigid order and chaos because in kabbalah we have the two worlds of adam and behema right which follow that same line of logic of, of the yeah. the interbalance of of orderly uh structuredness where everything is always perfected in action but the problem is nothing changes there See, that's what a lot of people don't realize is because it's perfected and orderly, nothing happens, nothing occurs. It's like stagnant, while the yeah, chaotic yeah. space is so totally chaotic that nothing uh -huh. has any like real substantial existence because it's yep. just ultimately self-destructive, right? Yeah. So you have to blend those two together to mm -hmm. well eventually get this, right? Yeah. That's kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and it's it's gonna be different for everybody. Like you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, if you got a boring structured nine to five life, you're probably going to have, uh, you know, it's, it's probably going to be that it's going to be, you go to work, you go home, you watch TV, and nothing, nothing happens. Um, and some people are completely fine with that. Um, whereas if you have a life where you don't do that and you're just, you know, you no kind of structure, nothing to support you, you know, you're probably going to find yourself in some pretty, some pretty tight spots. Um, and then there's yeah. the people that, that are able to balance where like they can, they can go to work and then in the evenings and the weekends or however their schedule is, you know, they, they, you know, they, they utilize their time and can, can whatever it is they want to do, you know, whether that's mm -hmm. 
you know, a hobby, a craft, a, an art, just, you know, a spiritual practice or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, an analogy, but I will you know, say if anybody gets anything out of this, I hope they just start making stuff. I mean, like, <laughs> I know that no one will be able to see, but this is one of my like Bob Ross paintings over here. You know what I mean? And your wall is covered in just like really awesome artwork and everything like that. It's really beautiful. I also, I'm, I'm jealous of all the bookshelves. I have a stack shelf, but that's intense. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of collection over the years. Yeah. Well, I mean, you say you've really been into this for most of your adult life, you know, which is, I, I think what many of us aspire to, you know, I mean, like right now I'm only 27 and I've been like really heavy into this for Zohar about three years, but occultism in general for more like seven to eight. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's like, you know, I just, I, I always um, sit down and wonder, maybe you wondered this when you were closer to my age. It's like, what will I be like when I'm older? You know, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. you know, uh, hopefully not a loony bin. I don't want to be that, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of thought that's, I'd, I'd go that route. The yeah. Bin. <laughs> there, there, were, there were moments where like I wondered where my sanity would be later um, yeah because yeah I mean you when you I mean there's so many rabbit holes and uh you kind of you kind of see how some of these folks do go crazy um you know especially if you you know you want to talk about the history of esotericism um gosh man you and you referenced the Lima man there's so many like so many of the individuals in that current that they just went off the rails yeah and uh it's i think i think it's that i think it's that you know too much chaos um but as an artist you know i i i have to have chaos because that's where that's where the stuff comes from and then it's me putting the order to that so like you know the, the chaos is the the creative unlimited that we're pulling from which is basically like a it's just the mimicking of creation itself you know that's you know all the creation myths they, they talk about that like how there was a you know the abyss or chaos and then out of the chaos came this yeah uh, and that's that's essentially the same thing as making art is you know you you know where, where does this idea come from and some people you know they get and there's different types of art too you can't just say art in general because you know there's there's people that make art that's just um something that looks cool you know that's okay that's that's fine that's fun you know it's safe um oftentimes that's probably more commercially successful because it is, <laughs> yeah it is, uh, even if it is like grotesque or or like sexual you know people people relate to it because it's kind of edgy but um it's not it's not super thought-provoking or anything um yeah. And even, you know, you can even say that about like, um, you know, art that deals with like social issues. I mean, that's still stuff that's dealing with with worldly things and, and topics there. I mean, that seems to be a little bit higher because it's dealing with like ethics um, of what's right and what's wrong. They're, you know, they're, they're confronting those. Um, but then if you start dealing in with, you know, art that comes from whether you want to call it the unconscious or the or a transcendence, um, you know, where is that coming from? You know, that's, that's yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. So and it's like, well, oh, go the ahead. sages would argue that it comes from uh, the spaces of divine wisdom, right? Uh, so, in the particularly the Kabbalistic understanding of it, all the, those random ideas that we have, you know, like mm -hmm. when you're driving around and you're just like, I should do this thing. And it's like not a thing you normally do, or maybe it's something you do engage with as a hobby, but it's like this new, yeah. fresh idea, like out of nowhere that it, it was believed at a time, particularly uh, when it comes to like the Zohar and Judaic mysticism, that those literally come from like heaven, essentially, you know, they, yeah. they're not really uh things that we just devise out of nowhere which i mean granted i know some people aren't that spiritual uh i am personally you know so i in a weird way i do kind of buy into this sense of like it's almost like not even my idea you know because sometimes ideas are a little too good and you're just like wow yeah that'd be sick well, and yeah. i've passed on some of those ideas and regretted it you know right uh, <laughs> yeah 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 you know better yeah. But there's a part of you like you know i don't know if it's like fear or whatever 
you know it has that that influence and talks you out of it or yeah that's that's definitely one of the factors Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i um i had a show in uh seattle 2019 yeah 2019 um up at that uh mort lake and company um and uh which is a fantastic um esoteric bookshop in, in seattle uh, home of ouroboros press but uh he's got a gallery space built in there mm-hmm. and uh the name of the show what i was getting to the name of the show was called uh, to receive and uh it was showcased in the recent body of work that i was that i was working on and a lot of it was um very kabbalistic influenced mm-hmm. um, which you know the i'm sure most people listen and probably know you know the translation of of kabbalah is something along the lines of to receive um, yes along those lines so so it was kind of a it was kind of a reference to that um but like all things symbolic you know there's 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 more than just one meaning but it was it was it was hinting at that that same idea that we were just talking about it's like you know these are these are things that were essentially presented to me and um my duty as the artist was to to make them and to give them to give them a visual form um so it was a, in a sense a, a, a reception because some of these things like they just they just come to me you know um you know some of them come in like say like a like a more uh, contemplative or meditative state um some of them come from from references and stuff like that that i'm that i'm working with but there's sometimes where it's just this image just boom it's in my head Mm -hmm. and i and i always have like a little like a little moleskin sketchbook on me all the time for that for that purpose because it's it's essentially it's like a dream you know it's like where does that where does that come from um and it'll disappear like just as fast as it showed up fast just as fast as like when you wake up and you roll over and you're all like shit what was that <laughs> um so yeah i, I gotta like i slap down a, a really loose doodle i might like jot down some notes or something like that too um <clears throat> and so there's 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 a potential piece of work that i'm going to be working on and at that moment i don't know what that means um there's there's been pieces too that i've worked on that like i'm i i have to digest while i'm while i'm working on them oh that yeah helps. it's a lot it's of like, the process is that is is me like okay like i'm 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 having this relationship with this this visual of, of symbols here and yeah it's it, it's a learning process like it's it's we're having an exchange where um you know i'm giving this thing a a, a material form of some sort um you know so that it can be it can be experienced in a sensory form on this level on this mundane level um but at the same time like you know it's it's like having a conversation where Mm -hmm. i'm i'm learning about this as i'm as i'm going along and um you know it's like it's like sitting down with somebody and you're learning about them and they're telling you things um in the process of it so so yeah a lot of these like back to like what i was saying about you know this this reception aspect you know it's it's presented like and where did where did it come from so you know yeah it's it's a it's a transcendental transmission basically and i mean whatever whatever your definition of that is you know that's going to depend on you know your whoever's whoever's trying to interpret that where it comes from you know you can say god you want to say the universe you know whatever um spirits who knows um that's up for interpretation and 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 however you want to interpret interpret that but it's it's i think it's undeniable that it's it comes from something beyond yeah uh, so yeah no i I, and i appreciate that because i mean i have some personal things if you've looked at my stuff at all right the most iconic symbol of the channel is the nimiton mask right i had no idea what this was whenever i was going into it and i learned much later 
reading Tikkun HaZohar, and by much later, I mean about a year, reading the right books and learning the right material to finally be like, oh, okay, this thing is accurate. You know, like what aspects of the tree it was associated with was something that was hard, you know, but essentially developing the correspondent relationship with it and trying to figure out, you know, essentially the general message of it uh, that took a while. And, uh, and I thought that to be, to be fair, I thought it just looked cool originally. Um, Cause like, I, I kind of, it was like an idea, right. It just popped in my head. Well, I actually, that's not true. I was having a really intense uh, spiritual experience um, but essentially, it, you know, the, the development of it feeling as if I had to make it and knowing that it was like going on the face and everything like that, that was all experiential. Uh, and the letters, I mean, I kind of knew what the letters were, but like, I didn't speak Hebrew at all at the time. Uh, yeah. you know, so it was, it was really odd to devise it and then much later figure out what I was looking at. Uh, and it does, it has a lot of really, really phenomenal correspondences. Uh, it has a lot of words on it. It's, it's bizarre. One day I, I've promised to eventually one day actually talk about it and, you know, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm probably going to just crop that out. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, when it's time, it's time. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, beyond or not, that, or not, or not, or never yeah yours. just al- yeah. just allude to it and just yeah. never do anything yeah like i mean you don't you don't have to you don't have to tell anybody like that's even even like my artwork um it's 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 great and i love having shows and exhibitions and it's guaranteed which is completely understandable that every time i have there's multiple people are going to be like what does what you know they'll point to one specifically and be like well what what does that mean what does this mean or what's what is this Mm -hmm. and you know i've got to the point where i I don't i don't do that um and the for for a few different reasons um one if if i tell them what that is that's me telling them my interpretation of it and at that point it has a static meaning it's like if I've, i've built I built a cage. Yeah, around. you've almost demystified it in a way. Totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, especially from going back to what I was talking about before, where this was something that was, um, you know, presented to me rather than something that I concocted. You know, who am I to to like put that put that restriction on it or that that definition to mm-hmm. where that's what it's, it solely means? Because a lot of these pieces, you know, I'll come back you know, a year or two later, and I'll look at them. And the, the meaning won't necessarily drastically change, but I will see elements in there or things differently. And it, and it does, it speaks to me differently. Um, I do, I do uh, hypocritically like to hear them tell me what they think it means, because there's oftentimes they'll see stuff in there that um, I haven't noticed. Right. Uh, or they'll tell me like, you know, like, oh, they'll, they'll, they'll make a reference to something to where it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't know that. Um, hmm. And so that's, that's always fun. But, you know, coming from the artist, you know, them wanting to hear like, you know, oh, what is, what does this mean? At, at that point, you know, it's, it's exactly what you said. It's, it's demystifying it. Yeah. Uh, and then it also kind of robs them of having that experience of having a, a conversation with it. And it's speaking to them in in their language. I think this gives us a good opportunity to kind of segue into something on the subject of occult symbolism, which it is very present within your work, uh, whether intentional or not. Uh, it is very present. A lot of the color palette choices often have, al- particularly in the alchemical series, were very like in your face, you know. And I love that sort of thing. I love the greens and the reds and all that. Uh, so one of the things that I was thinking about is what do you think about occult symbols or just symbolism in a general sense? Mm-hmm. What is that between you as the artist and the viewer? Like, have you ever thought about that relationship before of what it is that you're depicting? Because I know you don't make it just to mystify. There's mm-hmm. something there. There's almost like that, that you know you talk about this conversation that they get to have with it this developmental sort of ongoing expression and kind of back and forth that they get to have with viewing or engaging with a piece of work you know uh that's 
I guess I might have actually just kind of answered my own question. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, uh, is that something that you think that you really uh, might kind of pursue whenever you're developing your pieces? Do you hope for that? Or is it just a, a byproduct? Do, do you mean like, do I have like a, a certain intent on how they would react or yes. or the or an intended response that I would want from them. Yeah, are you hoping to encourage a very specific revelation or more so just to get the thoughts flowing? Yeah. No, I don't. Sorry. Man. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't I don't have that in mind. Um you know, if if I'm going into this to make something with the intent of a specific response or or yeah just that a specific response you know at that point i feel like i'm i'm no longer really in the creative realm but i'm more into it's it's more of a design at that point Mm -hmm. than necessarily like a, a creative uh creation um if, if I'm going in there with like, okay, like I've got to make this and then it's got to have this over here and this over here, um, you know, it's, it, it's a different, it's an entirely different approach than the way, the way that I work. Um, so no, no, I guess to, to answer your question, no, I, I, uh, hmm. I'm not trying to make anything that's going to really like appeal specifically or appease or have some sort of specific specific result okay um now i don't i don't want to you know say that that's not a that's not a form of 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 working at all because that that kind of goes against what many people probably listening would think of as like talismanic magic where you're you're creating a a sigil or something like that with a specific intent yeah Um, no i kind of like it though i kind of dig that you know you really are just making the pieces you know you make what comes to you and leave it open to whoever for whatever right right awesome and that and you know what that may that may even change too um you know i'm you know i'm I'm not opposed to it at that point um you know there may be a body of work or something like that where it's like okay there's going to be a series of 12 and each one's going to represent you know a, a specific planet or something or a a mineral or who knows um it doesn't mm-hmm. matter um but at least currently none of none of none of my pieces or the body of work that i have um are in that realm mm. so. well i want to say travis i feel like we've been going at it for about an hour yeah wow. and i i feel like it was pretty phenomenal i really appreciate cool. you being here yeah uh, <laughs> i appreciate you having me in the chat and it was fun it flew by now, uh, I hope you don't forget, uh, you have to do the shameless plug. Where are all the yep. places we can find you? Um, you can find me on my, on my website. That's where right. I, I've got all of all of my prints. And that's going to be, um, I go under a, a moniker. A lot of the history of like printmaking, or at least maybe in modern times, a lot of printmakers, they'll, they'll have a press. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's like a print shop, even if they don't have an actual print shop. So they'll call their, their body of work a... a press it's almost like an alter ego so um i i chose infinity prints about about 10 years ago mm-hmm. and uh yeah you can find me at that website it's it's infinity dash prints so infinity hyphen prints.com okay uh, social media really instagram is yeah yeah i follow you on one that i i really use yeah so um so yeah instagram is, is just my name so it's travis lawrence T-R-A-V-I-S-L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E. Right. Um, well, and anyone who's interested, so I'm going to have all the links in the description. You know what I mean? This is really, it's more for me to be able to get a catalog. Okay. I can have <laughs> it exactly. Because I, I'm always going to put that stuff up, you know, uh, because this is a phenomenal conversation. I hope we get to do it again sometime just because yeah. it was really, really yeah. enlightening in a way, you know, to yeah. talk about implements, especially in the process of art and creation and, and it kind of, it's magical relationship you know that's yeah it's really nice there's something about it it's very peaceable yeah yeah it's um yeah and and maybe 
just because of my 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 personal interest in this this realm of these topics uh, i recognize that but I, for me i think it's it's undeniable that you know the the artist is is working in that realm yeah. in multiple realms really technically but um and yeah the creative process is in in my in my opinion you know one of the the most magical things that that we can do in fact it's almost like it's it's kind of like our duty because we're we're mimicking the creator essentially at that point. right so. i agree i agree well again thanks uh, i 